Welcome to the Father State. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you so much for being with me. I absolutely appreciate it. I have with me Pastor Chuck Singleton of Loveland Church in Southern California, and he's known for starring in music videos on topics like police and race relations, the state of black men, and bringing romance back into relationships. Again, thank you for being here. Thank you. Especially tonight because it's the Academy Award night. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. You don't watch that. I, well, I do. Oh, your wife I, made you watch it? Yeah, you heard romance, and then, you know, <laughs> so they kind of go together. <laughs> That's right. I might not be watching it as much as I am sitting there. If you were not married or your wife didn't make you watch it, would you watch it? No. You would not watch it? I probably wouldn't. Yeah. I, but, I would look for the highlights on the news or something like that, probably. Um, in a press release about your music video, Man Up, you said, the killing has to stop. While it's not universal, police brutality is real. I worry every time one of my four sons goes out the door. Can you explain that to me? Well, uh, maybe worry is, is an exaggeration of what I literally feel, but I'll ex illustrate it this way. My youngest, when he turned 16, in the community where we live, which is a nice neighborhood, pretty classy area, in the first six weeks of his driver's license, he was stopped six times without one ticket. Now, I'm not begging for a ticket, right. but there was a reason why he was stopped and uh, a reason why there was no ticket. So it was uh, what is typically called, it seemed to us, driving while black, DWB. Now, for us, as we, my four sons and I, talked about it, we joke about it, and we talked about how to deal with it. The funny thing is that you asked me that question, and I, I was asked that by a local newspaper. I talked about that story, and the local police department saw it and uh, made a special effort to come and talk to us, and uh, we discussed it, and uh, it just was a good instructional moment for all of us, for them as well as for us. Did it mean racism or something else that your son was stopped so many times? You know, what did I, it mean to you? Uh, Jesse, I make a distinction between racism and bigotry. Um, racism can be how you treat a person, sometimes unknowingly, because of their color or the race that they're from. Bigotry is when you have emotion, feeling, and perhaps prejudices. So when your son was stopped for six times, what did that mean, bigotry or racism to you? I would think racism. It meant and racism? I, and I would assume racism until someone shows me that it's bigotry. Why would you assume racism? Well, because I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. I would assume that they're not feeling prejudice. I would assume that they're not hating my son, but uh, suspicious. And probably uh, with some degree of rationale to it, because... He's in a neighborhood that is predominantly white, and uh, he's black, and he's driving a nice car. You believe that white cops are racist? No, certainly not. Um, well, why would you assume racism then? Well, because he was stopped. So, you know, in other words, if, if 10 cops passed him by and one stopped him, then that one might have stopped him because of race. Uh, why do you think so many black men and now black women are stopped? Well, I imagine some are stopped because they were speeding or something. But uh, I would think that uh, if, they're, if they're stopped in suspicious manners or in the case with my son, perhaps there are some uh, crime demographics. Um, there are issues that uh, uh, are beyond our control, sociological things. What do that you have think about hateful groups like Black Lives Matter, those agitators, people like Sharpton and Jackson and Barack Obama and others who have been promoting this idea that white cops are racist and they are protesting and um, causing white cops to get fired in different areas? Uh, I wouldn't put them all in the same category. And nor, why not? And, well, then, nor would I say that uh, even they can be measured by a given moment in their lives. You don't measure a man by the moment. Why you know, would you put? Why would you not put all of them in the same basket? Well, I think Black Lives Matter, for example, has done some some anarchist things. 
um, of late, and uh, I don't. Have uh, they done any good? In my estimation, they have done some good. Are you okay with them saying Black Lives Matter? With the theme itself, I don't see a problem. So you're okay with it? Some of the some of the issues and some of the approaches and programs that yeah. they put forth, I may not agree with. Would you be okay with White Lives Matter if there was a radical, agitating group like White Lives Matter out there? Would you be okay with that too? I wouldn't have a problem with it in and of itself. Black Lives Matter were chanted in New York. What do we want, dead cops? When do we want them now? What do you think about that? Well, I, I, I heard that and saw that video, and I don't think it was quite the way you put it. I heard that said, but that was said in the presence of a cop, and it was said in No, I, a, saw them, I saw them marching down the street shouting, yeah, I saw it too, what do we want, the, the dead cop, cops? The cop when do we right want there. them now? The cop was right what there do we with want, them. dead cops? When do we want yeah. them now? Right, and one so of the cops it, it was is right the way there with I said him. It was. Yeah, well, it was, but it was said with a cop there. They were teasing one another. No, in that nobody context. was laughing. The policemen were not laughing. Well, yes, he was. You look at the video. Well, again. I didn't see this one thing you're talking yeah. about. I'm talking about a crowd of folks walking down the road, uh -huh. chanting, "What do we want, dead cops?" Yeah. Well, I, I would think that in the case with Black Lives Matter, you have not found a great advocate of Black Lives Matter. My view of how civil rights issues should be handled. Is a handle is akin to uh, what Dr. Martin Luther King yeah. believes. I don't believe in anarchy. I don't believe that some of the anarchistic uh, approaches of Black Lives Matter are the best ways. Um, so I named Jesse Jackson, Barack Obama, Black Lives Matter, Al Sharpton, the NAACP, the Congressional Black Caucus, and most of the black preachers who are not called by God but by their mama. They're all in the same basket, but you didn't agree with that, right? I certainly don't agree with and, that. And why not? What's the difference between who in that group should not be in that group? Well, I think, for example, your last part, your, and most of the black preachers who haven't been called by God but by their mama, I, I, I don't know how you can make such a determination. If, <laughs> unless you've surveyed them, and maybe you've gone to the National Baptist Convention or the AME churches. I've interviewed over 400 of them. And except for two, all of them were called by their mama or grandmama. Yeah, well, you, you picked the right 400. Then. <laughs> uh, the, reality, the reality is in, whether you're in, um, uh, in Los Angeles, there are more than 400. So if you count Chicago <laughs> and New York, you know, it would so take a little So in that group that I named, tell me something. Who, who shouldn't be in that group of agitators? Who in, in that group as, that I named, yeah. as what? Agitators. As agitators? For evil. For evil, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know any of them that ought to be in that group as agitators for evil. Really? Yeah. Name one that's good in that group. Uh, I think probably, unless you have some specials among those 400, I wouldn't call any of those that you've named as anything but good. So the ones I named are all good? In my estimation, there's some good in all of them. Really? And what, what is good? Let's do Barack Obama. What's good about him? What's good about Barack Obama, yeah. uh, he has uh, made a place in history as the first black president. And whether we agree with him or not, or like it or not, he was not only, as Dick Cheney and some others said, mistakenly elected the first time, he was elected twice. Uh, that affirmation from the American people has to be accepted whether people but want how to accept is that or not. good? Well, I mean, the reality is that the American people think it's, he's good. But I'm Even asking if, you as a pastor, well, how I'm is, saying, that, I'm saying how is you, that good? I'm, I'm saying that whether we, you and I agree on what's good or not, the American people have agreed I twice know, but you good. as a pastor are giving me I'm, something I'm good. There. I'm going So there. give me something good about Obama, man. Good about Obama, he saved the auto industry in the United States when it crashed right after he was elected. Is that, so that's a good thing, Eddie? That's a good thing. Uh, let me ask, uh, Barack Obama support abortion at any point, even if a baby should come out alive, on the t let the baby down the medical table, he said. Is that good? I didn't hear him say that, but I don't agree with any of his uh, stands on abortion, or I don't agree with any abortion at all. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Barack Obama supports same-sex marriage. Is that good? I don't agree with that either. Yeah. Uh, we are more divided as a race today than any other time in the history of America. 
under Barack Obama, blacks and whites are divided oh, today. Blacks and whites divided? Yeah. Uh, I disagree with you there, with there as well because, uh, as I said to someone who said, uh, you know, it's a real problem. White people are so upset because of Barack Obama. And I reminded that black person that uh, Barack Obama could not have become president without white support. So would you call those things evil that I named that he support? I would. You would call them evil? When you speak of abortion? Can sure. a man be good and evil? No, but a president can do good and evil things, as have been done for oh, 47 different So presidents. you named a physical thing that he did, and that's up for question. I just don't have time to get into it. But how about all the moral things that he's not a moral man? Right. Does that concern you? I, I would say that those issues you named are definitely immoral. But I'd also point out that uh, George W. Bush appointed the first gay ambassador uh, and, in And why are you leadership. telling me about Bush? I'm well, not I'm, about I'm Obama. saying that because my point is not so much as much as you might think as a Republican Democrat. It's really not for me. No, I'm not thinking that at my, all right now. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm not my thinking My point that. in pointing that out is that in every case, So you appointed out another bad behavior to justify Obama's bad behavior? Every president makes decisions, some of which you can't really get to the White House without making some, what I would consider, immoral, uh, bad moves. So you're and okay with that then, that he's certainly evil not. in that area? No, and, certainly not. Oh, okay. Certainly not. But I'm okay that he's president uh, as much did as you, I would have been Did with you George vote for w. him? I voted for Barack Obama. And you voted for him twice? I voted for Barack Obama twice. Why? Uh, primarily because I wanted to give a uh, black man a chance to, to do it. And, um, but it's not a good man. Well, and by you being a but, pastor, but, but I would think again, you would look for a good, if you got to have a black one, sure. that you would look for a good black man. Sure. I, you know, it, it, to me, as I look at him or George W. or his father, George H.W., both of them made decisions, too. There's got to be someone in the White House, and there are going to be some decisions that are not lining up with the Bible and not lining up with me. So I you know voted for Obama some... simply because he was a black man? If I had done that, then I'd be voting for Ben Carson, and I'm not doing that. You're not voting for Dr. Carson? I'm not. He's a better man than Obama. You just prophesied that I'm voting for Trump, so I guess I could That's be right. voting for Carson. Stomping for Trump. <laughs> yeah. uh, let me ask, are um, black Americans suffering due to racism or the lack of moral character? Uh, it's neither. Why are they suffering? Well, I'm not. And, uh, Most black people are, though. And well, why yeah, are they? In, in the sense that it has the vestiges of racism. In other words, the root of it comes out of racism, i.e., if my father or his father couldn't go to school because he was black and couldn't get a college education, and so I come out talking in a different vernacular and cannot speak both my ebonics, as they say, patois, as well as to be able to speak standard English, the consequence is I go interview for a job and another kid who's white, who's had that background, whose parents taught him a certain way to talk or other things, then he's able to get that job and I have some things that are holding me back because I can't talk a certain way and let's, I'm talking like this let's and do so this. I go to get the job. Just for me, I'm, I'm black and slow. Okay. Uh, so I want to go back to the question, are most black Americans suffering due to racism or the lack of more character? Well, it, 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 it is a false equivalency. It is neither. It is, so they're not suffering is, due to racism. It is both. And they're it not is suffering. more than both. But you, you give me too many answers. That's all you can get, though. I mean, everything is not a sound bite. There, there are no, some things. No, I want to know, that, is it yet, are they suffering due to racism or the lack of moral character? It is not either or. It so is they're both. not suffering due to racism, and they're not suffering due it, to the it lack is, of moral character. It is both and, and some more. Does racism affect black employment? Yes. Uh, are there other things that affect, affect black employment? Certainly there are. Racism is one of them. Uh, perhaps some character issues, depending on who the person is. Let me, let me go back to this. First, I want to say that racism doesn't exist. It's an illusion. What do you say about that? I say that's silly. You say that's silly? Yes, sir. Why do you say it's silly? Well, I've been called names enough to know that racism exists. But that could be because they just hated you. They made a judgment and they hate you, not because of your color, they just hate you. Uh -huh. <laughs> Do you ever have fights with family members? No, I refuse. 
But you know, family members do fight, right? Sure. And uh, is that racist? Not necessarily, no. And so why is it that when blacks and whites fight, is racism? You're oversimplifying reality. Does the Bible say that we have a race issue or a spiritual issue? I think the biggest problem with us when it comes to race relations is not skin, but sin. And so that issue of our problem starts on the inside. It's a person's heart. And so the uh, Bible says that we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, uh -huh. but against spirits and principalities and wickedness in high places. Yes. Meaning that it has nothing to do with skin color. It has nothing to do with male and female. It's good versus evil. Am I right about that? I believe you're right about that. So then why should children of God go along with the children of the lie and call it racism when it's really not racism, something that we doesn't exist, never has existed, and, and because it doesn't exist, we can't solve it. You, Why not call you, it what it is? So you we actually can, think racism has never existed? Right. Do you think you could trace your family history back to a thing called slavery, or is that my imagination? I can. A matter you, of fact, So you don't I, think slavery was racism? No. You weren't, your parents... Because there were black people who owned slaves no, as that's well. That's not my point. The point is, why were you a slave? Because they just happened to own me. But it, let me tell you But this. it had nothing to do with your race. Well, well, is, no. is there a reason why the preponderance of slaves in America, they were just accidentally black? But or? you know, white people have been enslaved as well by other of whites, course. right? And then blacks have been enslaved by other blacks in, in parts of Africa. That's right. They're still in, is uh, that yeah. racism? Well, no, probably not, no. I, yes or no? I said probably not. I know, but I need a yes or no. You're a pastor, so uh -huh. I, I want to try to help people. Yeah, I understand that. Is but that racism when black when blacks enslave other, other blacks? blacks. Yeah. Uh, it can be racism, sir. When That's blacks the issue. enslave other blacks? It can be, yes. How is that? I'm black, you're black, I take you to the white slaveholder because you're black. That's racism on my part and his. But we're not talking about white on black ra uh, slavery. In Africa, black on black. Yeah. Slavery, no white people uh -huh. around. Yeah. Is that racism? It can be. But is it? You'll have to check his heart. I don't know. <laughs> the reality is the preponderance, the most of white on black slavery was racism. How do you know if that? You read, if you read the writings, if you read the diaries, if you check the historical statements made by the folks who held the slaves, the disrespect, the disregard, but, making them uh, three-fifths, making, them, worse making them not a person, then three-fifths of a person, uh, that is racism. It was institutionalized, codified right there you in know, the Constitution. that was for the power of the of vote. Of course it was, but it's still racism, no, it's regardless not. of what your motive is. Let me move racism. on. Um, All right. Morality. I say that most black Americans suffer, are suffering not because of racism, but the lack of moral character. Most blacks are immoral. Do you disagree with that? I think that's a stupid statement, sir, with all due respect. <laughs> and do you disagree? I definitely disagree, yes. And why do you disagree? Well, to say that most blacks are immoral, uh, I, I disagree because it compares, it, it by, by virtue of, uh, of, of the context in which you say it, it is in comparison to whites. I think that's what you're saying. I wasn't thinking that way, but okay. Well, I mean, you have to have some context but to it. But you disagree with me, right? Oh, yes. 72% uh, of black babies are born out of wedlock today. And what's is the percentage that, of white babies born out of wedlock? Is that immoral? What percentage of white babies are born out of wedlock? Answer my question. First. I happen to know. But is understand. that immoral? It's definitely immoral. So then, so these blacks who are having these babies are carrying out, uh, performing an immoral act, right? Uh-huh. Am I right? Yes. Uh, black on black crime out of control in most of the cities. Is that immoral? I couldn't call that necessarily immoral. It's not immoral? Why it not? depends on what, you, what crime, who, how, who's participating in it, how many people. And, you know, you went from the one about the babies and you left a question unanswered. What was that? The majority of white babies are also well, born out of wedlock. Well, why are you bringing up whites when we're talking about blacks? Well, because why are you picking on blacks? I'm not. <laughs> why, I'm not why, picking why, on why, blacks. I mean, it's, I it's an you American here I'm problem. To help blacks. See, why are we talking about racism then? Because it's an American problem, How's not it, a black it's problem. It's not an American problem. It is an American problem. How's the majority that? of babies in America now are born out of wedlock. But see, we're talking about the issues of black Americans today, 
And how are you going to help them if you justify their bad behavior? Oh, nobody's justifying. By pointing out what white people are doing because blacks are already blaming everybody else for their problems instead of themselves, so they're not getting better. Uh -huh. And so that's why I brought you here, to make them focus on themselves uh -huh. and stop talking about what the white man is doing. Okay. Uh, black people who are focusing on yourself, stop. But no, you are pointing out, when I ask you about immorality and all this stuff, you're mm. pointing out what the white man did. No, I no, I why. only did it because you are, by definition, comparing black people to whites. I'm not. What? By definition, no, I'm not comparing them, them at all. I'm talking you were saying, about, you, I'm you talking know, about the way that God wants us to live as a people if we want to survive on earth. The reality is that there are many strong characters who are black, high morals, who are doing good jobs. There are scholars. There are people with a but we're high talking degree, about the majority that are there, not. there are people with a high degree of commitment to education. Which with, is most important, morality or education? I would say they're both important. No, number one and number two. Well, when, when, you, when you take a chain, which link is most important? You break the link, there's no chain. Neither one is number one. Neither one. Let me ask this first. Should police uh, racially profile people? No. Why not? It creates uh, very negative attitudes towards police but and still, in the community should they do it? Just because some people don't like it doesn't mean they shouldn't do it. The criminals are not going to like it, but the good people will. I've never been in jail, and I didn't like it. I've been stopped. Why you didn't like it? Well, I didn't like being stopped. I had a policeman stop me and tell me, did you know why I stopped you? And I said, no. Was I speeding? He said, no, I stopped you because you're black, and this neighborhood is white. Now, if you like that, help yourself. Why but, you didn't like it? But I didn't like being Why told, you stopped me because I'm black. Were you a Christian at the time? Of course I was, yes. So you were a Christian at the time? Yes. And if it's true that this person said that to you, oh, it's absolutely you were true. offended by it? Uh, definitely I was offended by How it. How can a Christian be offended by something like that? How could a Christian black man not be offended by something like that? Because if when... If you stop me doing your duty, and if you respect me enough, if you got to stop me for that reason, respect me enough not to let me know. Let me ask, did you love that cop that stopped you and did that? Still do. Then why were you offended? What is, uh, I love my wife, she's offended me at times too. She can offend you too? Yeah, of course. So you still have an ego in operation? If you want to call it that. And that's what it is? There's nothing wrong with the ego. But how can you be of God and of the devil too? Because What's it's the, the devil, devil that pushes the ego. It's God that set you free from the ego. That's not true. That is true. There's a, there's a verse in the Bible in the Philippians that says this, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The word for I in the original language of the New Testament is the word ego. And you think it means that you should be offended by what happens in the world? It means you exist. That's all ego means. So if I, if I have an ego, it just means I exist. If it's under control and under his control, then I'm in good shape. I don't, I don't lose So are my you identity. a prideful man? I wouldn't call myself that, no. I don't think anybody around me would. So why would you have an ego then and not be a prideful As man? As I said, the Word of God says I can do all things. Ego can do all things through Christ. Let me ask this. Uh, whose fault is it that Trayvon Martin is dead? I suppose it's uh, the guy that shot him. He shot him. Even though he was found not to be guilty? He shot a guy, so I suppose he Could said it, whose fault is it that right. he's dead. Could it be Trayvon Martin's fault? I would say probably he has some degree of uh, responsibility for it. I say that it's his parents' fault and his fault. Uh, his parents were no good. They didn't raise their son. He grew up without the love of a father and a mother together and guided him by his apples. Mm -hmm. He became what he called himself a gangster. That's... Uh, Another ridiculous statement. You think if they you raised take, them right? If you take, you take, I, I can give you biblical examples. Uh, Samson's parents, <laughs> they raised him. Who is Samson? Samson in the Bible. 
I don't want they, to talk about no, him. You, no, you want to talk about Trayvon. They, they raised this man <laughs> right, Simpson. and he still went off the path. There, it's possible I know to do Simpson all the right things. I know things. Trayvon, and Trayvon wasn't a Samson. I didn't say he was. I'm saying to you that <laughs> you can't his, blame the parents. Or his parents. You can't blame the parents for how a child turns out. You things can. happen. Yes, you things can. Things happen. You can absolutely blame the parents. Okay. Because if you the parents were good, decent you citizens. you have any children? Yes. All of them straight and narrow? So far, they are on the right path now, but because, especially my older son, I wasn't there for him. He had a rough beginning, but he's doing fine now because I've gotten fine. Because I've been what? done better. You've I'm done better, better now. I've turned and back so to God. So my son is better, but because I was not there for him, uh -huh. he had a rough time. So the only thing you need is to be there for them. No, you need to love God and be guided by him. And his parents did not love and do not love God. Mm -hmm. And if you do love God, your parents will never go, your children will never go wrong. That's right. They you, may stray a little bit, but not too far. They will not become a gangster smoking pot and out stirring up mess. You, you need to tell Billy Graham that because his son smoked pot and, and went out on the other side. You so need if to tell that's true, George, maybe Billy Graham you need fell to tell somewhere. George H.W. Bush that because well, his son. Why do you keep pointing out the white people? Oh, I didn't know. I, I didn't <laughs> realize they were white. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I was just calling out people. My final question. Remind me of, of white people so I can make sure I can. How about no. Michael Brown? Who fought, whose fault was it that he is it that he's dead? His oh, parents Michael or Brown. Michael? That was Michael Brown's fault. And his parents? Because they I, were I no good either. I don't know that it was. I, you know, and it's easy to call people no good. Here's my final question for, me, for okay. you. Your media representative told my pro producer that you, uh, you've had, you have interviewed Louis Farrakhan before. Uh, is that true? No. I have debated his number two man. Oh, yeah, I think I saw that on, on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, you handled that pretty well. Thank you, sir. Yeah, pretty good. Didn't you debate him, too? Uh, one of those guys, some of them, yeah. I don't know. They're so mean. Yeah, uh, they are. Thank you so much. Did you have fun? I did, as always. <laughs> thank you so much for coming. Right, I appreciate Jesse. it. Thank you, sir. All right. And thank you for tuning in, folks. I absolutely appreciate it. Yeah.